bold experiments cost money. To get the needed funds, Governor Terry Sanford and other interested North Carolinians went to private foundations. The Ford Foundation responded with a pledge of $7 million. From sources in the state itself, the Zachary Smith Reynolds and Mary Reynolds Babcock Foundations came another two and a half million. So North Carolina received nine and a half million dollars to spend on experiments to break the cycle of poverty. An action program doesn't begin with money alone. It has to have people to make the decisions and more people to do the work. Governor Sanford and other early planners chartered a non-profit firm called the North Carolina Fund Incorporated. Then they named a board of directors. Board chairman, Governor Terry Sanford, Raleigh, North Carolina. C.A. Pete McKnight, editor, the Charlotte Observer. Wallace Murchison, Wilmington attorney. Hargrove Bowles, Jr., Greensboro businessman and politician. J. Gerald Cohen. Asheville banker, Dr. Samuel Duncan, president of Livingstone College, Salisbury, North Carolina, Dr. Hollis Edens of Winston-Salem, executive secretary, Mary Reynolds Babcock Foundation, and former president of Duke University, James A. Gray of Winston-Salem, former publisher of Winston-Salem Journal and Sentinel, now president of Old Salem Incorporated, Dallas Herring from Rose Hill, North Carolina, chairman of the State Board of Education, Mrs. B.C. Parker, professional educator of Albemarle, Mrs. H. Frank Forsyth, Winston-Salem civic leader, John H. Wheeler, Durham banker, and Thomas J. Pearsall, Rocky Mount, North Carolina farmer, businessman, and politician. These board members donate their services as decision makers to the North Carolina Fund. The fund's board then hired a man to handle the operating side of the organization. The man, George Esser, fund executive director, a professor of government and law at the University of North Carolina and assistant director of the Institute of Government at Chapel Hill. Esser's first task was to assemble a staff of professionals to carry on the day-to-day -day work of the fund. Mary Hatley, editor and teacher, native of North Carolina, now administrative assistant to the fund's executive director. Bill Koch, who started as a social worker in Brooklyn settlement houses, then handled migrant worker aid programs in Texas, New Mexico, and Chicago, finally becoming community development director for the National Council of Churches. Koch will supervise the experimental community development programs for the North Carolina fund. Mike Brooks, an experiment has little value if its effects aren't properly measured. Brooks is the fund's research man who had already distinguished himself with community research projects in several North Carolina communities. Bill Darity, program development man, holder of a PhD in public health, experienced in health education and public health program development in several southern states, as well as in World Health Organization projects in Switzerland, Egypt, Lebanon, and other countries. Billy Barnes, writer and photographer, formerly chief Southeastern correspondent for a magazine publishing house. As public relations man, Barnes works with words and pictures to explain the North Carolina Fund to the people of the state and the nation. With a professional staff, a board of policymakers, and the foundation money, the fund began planning its assault on poverty in North Carolina. When all the proposals were in, the fund's professional staff literally rolled up their sleeves for a special three-day work session to analyze the 51 documents. First, the proposals were examined to see if they met criteria originally outlined by the fund when it asked for proposals. The fund staff examined, re-examined, discussed, and rediscussed the proposals and the criteria and systems for rating the proposals. Then the staff members wrote a summary of each proposal, 
to go into the briefcases of board members and staff members as they worked their way through North Carolina on an unusual series of trips. Trips that the fun men came to call on-site visits. As a part of the process of getting the 51 community proposals narrowed down to the 10 most promising ones, a team of fun men visited each of the 51 communities between mid-February and mid-March. The teams, with members alternating from trip to trip, met with community action committees in two and sometimes three communities per day. Often, as many as three teams were out visiting at the same time. In meeting after meeting, the board members explained the fund's hopes and plans to the people. North Carolina Fund, as you know, is a nonprofit corporation organized at the instance of our governor some 12 months ago for the purpose of attacking this tremendous problem, which we gave the name of the cycle of poverty. People don't like the name, I think primarily because it sounds too bare, but it's a fact, and, and I think the choice of, uh, of the phrase was good, because it speaks exactly to the point. Our decisions will uh, be based on various criteria, uh, for instance, on the content of the proposals. Uh, is the proposal feasible? Is it practical? Uh, does it get at the problems? Is it a broad program covering many areas? Uh, is it creatively experimental or is it just a, a rehash or an extension of things that uh, are already being done? Is it actually supported by the community? Does it bring existing resources into play? Can it be carried on after fund support uh, is necessarily withdrawn. The only people that we really hope to do anything with are the children. Now, the children are the key to this thing. Starting with the preschool child, you mentioned the, the preschool child mother, but something ought to be done for the preschool child, especially coming out of a family where nobody knows how to read or write, the kid who goes to the first grade without ever having seen anybody read or write. The fun men didn't do all the talking. Most of the time, they listened to the thoughts and ideas of hundreds of North Carolinians disturbed by the poverty around them. We have just entirely too many families that do not have all of the necessities of life. We have in Harney County, some 13,579 housing units. Both without flush toilets, almost 40%. Number of baths or showers, uh, 43%. More than one person per room, we have almost 20% or a fifth of our people with more than one person per room. Three room house with 11 people with three families in this one house, the mother, two daughters with their children was living in this house, 11 children in a three-room house, and the floors were subfloors. They hadn't been completed, some of them, but they say cracked, the cracks, you know, so the subfloors. And some of the children couldn't go to school because they didn't have any shoes. Positive, in my understanding of it, is based a lot on discrimination. Discrimination is based a lot on segregation. One of my criticism was that the school board itself did not face the fact to come out with a broad statement on the elimination of segregation of public school. Now, it seems to me that where this fund can do us so much good is in this area because, you know, the pattern of human behavior is such that first you're reluctant to do something and then you accept it, and then you embrace it. Well, the same thing when you go to talking of Negro employment, of married employment. Uh, for a long time, this was a very difficult thing to sell. Now, we've got some firms that are doing it. We've got some firms that are considering it. We've got some firms that are not doing it. But as this becomes popular, as one does it and then another, why well, it begins to snowball. Now, it will come about whether you all help us or not, but the thing is, it will come about much quicker and much better if you all see your way clear to help us on this matter.
Okay, we are a great part of the problem. And so we are man enough to realize and such, so we want to be helped here and now, and this is how it can be done. So later on, you can worry about giving us education, but right now, give us a chance to earn the money so that we can make sure that our kids get a chance to get education. When ministers get together and talk about this report, we find it difficult to communicate with people in, in depressed economic situations. We find that what we're used to say is couched in middle-class terminology that is understandable to middle-class people, but we're not speaking in the common tongue when we are, are talking with these people oftentimes. When the last visit had been made and the team checked out of the last of many hotels, they had plenty of notes and memories of conversations with leaders in 51 North Carolina communities. The fund men had a profile of the state's poverty problems and an analysis of what the state's citizens must do about those problems. 